Good morning and welcome to the Vinton Furnace State Experimental Forest. Today I'd like to introduce you to one of our oaks. It's one of the oaks in the red oak group. And the oaks in the red oak group have one thing in common. They actually have multiple things in common. But one of the things that you can use to identify red oaks is at the tips of each of the veins or at each of the lobes, you're going to have little bristle tips. So they're going to be pointed typically and they'll have a little bristle tip. And that's a key identifying characteristic to separate the red oak group from the white oak group. But again, this is Quercus coccinea or scarlet oak. It's typically found in our hill country, um, the unglaciated portion of Ohio, and it's a dry site species. So wherever I find scarlet oak, I'm typically up on a ridge on a relatively dry site. It's probably one of the shortest lived of all the oaks too. It only lives probably typically less than 100 years before it starts to senesce and fall apart, where some of the other oaks can live for hundreds and hundreds of years. But a couple things that'll help you identify scarlet oak and separate it from the other red oaks are one are the leaves. The leaves have um, multiple lobes and they typically have very thin lobes with really deep cut sinuses or gaps between the lobes. That's a great identifier. Um, this leaf looks very similar to another red oak or a species in the red oak group, that's pin oak. What makes it much different than pin oak is where it occurs. Pin oak's a swamp species, so if you're up on a ridge in southern Ohio or eastern Ohio, you're probably going to have scarlet oak. Um, <clears throat> they are very thin lobed as well with pin oaks. But one thing you'll notice is that these gaps or sinuses are more C-shaped instead of V-shaped or divergent. So you'll notice that they'll want to curve in and make like a C shape. Especially when you get to leaves high up in the crown, you're going to have very deeply cut, very thin low leaves. So that's a great identifier for scarlet oak. Had a branch that blew out of this tree, so there's a couple other characteristics I'd like to talk to you about. Like all the other oaks, they're going to have clusters or groups of buds on the tip of the twig. Kind of looks like a knuckle sandwich. You'll have multiple sized uh, buds, but they're all clustered, clustered up towards the tip. Buds are a great identifier, especially for seedlings and small trees. And what makes scarlet oak buds unique is that they're kind of fuzzy at the tip, but reddish brown at the base. And unlike um, red oak, which northern red oak has a reddish brown bud from top to bottom, Black oak actually has a fuzzy bud from top to bottom. It's more tan in color, but this tends to have a white, whitish silvery colored bud at the tip and a reddish brown at the base. Um, <clears throat> looks like it's gonna be a great year for acorns for the red oak group. Um, this scarlet oak is absolutely loaded with acorns. Um, and what makes it unique, you've got a cap that covers probably more than half of the acorn. And the cap tends to be kind of glossy or waxy. It almost looks like it's been dipped in paraffin. And then when you turn it and look at the base, these aren't fully matured yet, but you often have these concentric circles or rings around the tip of that acorn. Very short stalk or almost non-existent stalk with these concentric circles around the base of the acorn. Again, the cap covers more than half of the acorn and the concentric rings make a, are great identifiers for scarlet oak. Um, like all other red oaks, it takes two years for an acorn to mature. These are in their second year, they're almost mature, um, and they'll hit the ground this fall. They won't germinate till the following spring. Other great ID characteristics for scarlet oak, it tends to have a very swollen base or buttress. Um, one of the reasons for this, it can actually harbor the disease that causes chestnut blight. So it'll hang out and uh, spend part of its life cycle in the base of these scarlet oaks in particular. They tend to be swollen and blocky down low, but as we get higher up in the canopy, you're gonna notice vertical streaks very similar to what you're gonna see on a northern red oak. Uh, scarlet oak is a very poor self-pruning tree as well, so you're gonna see branches, lots of dead branches hanging on down low, um, and lots of evidence of knots and defects on this tree. So for timber purposes, it's not very valuable because it's very knotty it's hard to find very long clear sections of wood in scarlet oak. A good field ID characteristic is when you look up through this crown, you're going to see a lot of light passing through it. Because those sinuses are so deep, there's not as much surface area up there, and a lot of light can pass through. I think that's a great adaptation for a dry site. If you think about it, they're going to be glossy, they're going to have a waxy coat, and they're not going to have a lot of surface area, so they're not going to transpire or lose as much water. Again, this is scarlet oak. Quercus coccinea, 
pretty common species on dry ridges in southeastern and eastern Ohio.